I'm Craig Kenneth, a relationship coach and a psychotherapist. Every relationship is different and every breakup is different. Work with me and you'll get professional help on your situation. And if you're in no contact, focused on personal growth, my workbook series, The Knowledge, will help you make changes like you've never made before. Available now at AskCraig.net. Hi there, I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. And I'm Coach Victoria. And in this video, we're gonna be talking to you about when an avoidant realize that they're losing you or that they've lost you. Mm. What do they do? What do they do? Well, we're about to get right into it. Before we start, I did wanna say that Craig and I are available for coaching sessions. You can head to our website and book from there. Absolutely easy to do, we'll be happy to help you out. So if you've been on the channel for any length of time, you certainly have heard us talking about attachment styles and an avoidant attachment style. Now, the reason that this is so important is that breakups happen differently based on attachment styles because people have their own way of bonding and having long-term relationships. And they have different needs in those relationships and they have different uh, fears and desires and so those things are gonna come out in a breakup and so the avoidant often gives up on a relationship easier than somebody that might have an anxious attachment style or a secure attachment style because avoidant people struggle with trust and getting close to people because they've been hurt so often in their life that what they have tended to do is sweep things under the rug. They don't like to think about things. They don't like to deal with things. They avoid problems. Think of an avoidant as somebody who avoids. Right. Right. They, and this can be really hard for you to connect with if you're on the opposite side of the spectrum. Mm -hmm. If you are more of an overthinker, more of a doer, more of a fixer. So try to think outside of the box when hearing this today. Absolutely. You have to understand that they're very different than you. If you have an anxious attachment style, they are very different, okay? So the avoidant, they don't wanna think about things. They try to minimize things, right? They often have black and white thinking about things. For example, you may have heard them say, this is just too hard. Mm -hmm. Relationships are supposed to be easy and this has been hard, this has been a lot of work, right? So they have these kind of thoughts and beliefs about things that impact their desire to stay in a relationship. Exactly. One of the things that you have to know about avoidance is that they still need connection, just like any other human being. Mm -hmm. So even if we are talking about their difficulty with trust and their difficulty with connecting and really seeking for that connection, they still are human and, and pursue those things. Yes. So just keep that in mind as we speak. We're not saying that avoidance don't want relationships altogether. They do, but just in a different way. And right now you're thinking, they're not human. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and especially right after a breakup, when you see them relieved, when you see them almost happy that the relationship is over, when you can see the weight off of their shoulders, it can be really hard to believe, did they ever want this? Did they ever really care? Yeah. You know, they can come off as, as very cold and almost emotionless sometimes. That's right. And this is all part of the avoidant attachment. These are all mechanisms that developed early in their childhood yep. that make them the way they are. Yep. They were feeling a lot of pressure. Mm -hmm. Exactly. With this, I will say that attachment is really powerful even for an avoidant. And this is something that hits us in our unconscious mind. So even if their outward behaviors are showing that they're being very cold, that they might even be saying to you, you know, it's over, this is never gonna happen again, you know, I'm never getting back with you again, unconsciously, their body and their minds were connected with you for some period of time, and that attachment is what's powerful. So. Yes, and so when you're anxious that they're going to forget about you, mm -hmm. that they're just going to move on, well, they may be trying to do those things like I talked about, sweeping things under the rug, not thinking about it. 
those defense mechanisms can be effective, but ultimately the power of our unconscious and the bond that we form, those are overwhelming to the defense mechanisms. Those defense mechanisms aren't going to work when they're sleeping or they're laying their head on the pillow at night. Mm -hmm. Those intrusive thoughts are going to break through and have an impact on them. That's why we say you just have to trust the process of no contact because in time, the power of separation anxiety in those bonds, it's like an alarm system that they can't turn off. They could put in earplugs, they can start humming mm -hmm. into themselves trying to ignore it, but ultimately the alarm keeps going off for, it doesn't turn off. And so it has a big impact on them. Now, of course, this is not for every situation. Mm -hmm. And sometimes exes don't experience these things, but for the most part, anybody who had a reasonable long-term attachment to you and love for you, they are going to experience those things. Mm -hmm. And a question that we get very often is, is my ex thinking of me? Am I on their mind just like they're on my mind? And it's the answer to that question is yes, but in a very different way. So as Craig was saying, these defenses allow them to suppress in their conscious mind during the day a lot of that grief, a lot of that separation. Yeah. And but daydreaming yeah, when you're in the car, yeah. just driving. That's true. Intrusive or, thoughts. Or something that reminds you of that person. Like maybe you see uh, a movie trailer of mm -hmm. a movie they really like. You can't turn that off. It, right. it gets through. Right. You can't ignore that. Mm -hmm. Which brings me to my next point of they may try to do things to get you to reach out to them or to test to see if you really have moved on or not. Mm -hmm. So many of you will hear this and think, oh my God, my ex is being so manipulative. They're being so malicious. We can't assume your ex's intent in this. No. But what we do see is these behaviors often in a breakup. And on some level, now, if, if they felt smothered, especially towards the end of the relationship, in their mind, they know that they can come back to you and that you would be available to them. Yeah. Part of the reason why we talk so often about no contact is for them to understand that you could also move on. That's right. That you are not there waiting for them as a plan B, as a backup. So with this, keep in mind that your ex might try to post things on social media that are risky or that are them going out with someone else making you jealous. It could be adding things to a, a similar playlist that the two of you had or a shared playlist. Rather. Songs. Exactly. Yeah. Songs. Concerts. Yes. Oh man. I, Netflix. <laughs> yeah. There's so many different ways that an ex will reach out in a, it's not a reach out, but it's, it's more of an indirect way of sending you a message. Mm -hmm. So not for you to be paranoid about what their next move is or what they're what they're doing and for you to keep an eye on them all the time but just for you to be aware that there's a lot more going on with them than you even realize yeah they're trying to provoke you mm -hmm. they want to get you to they, instead of them reaching out to you which is risky they try and do something to provoke you to reach out to them don't fall for it mm -mm. many of you are weak and you do it <laughs> don't do it you got to be strong Okay, don't let them provoke you into breaking no contact. Mm -hmm. If you do, you're going to regret it. Trust and many me. of you are like, well, if they want me to reach out, then I should reach out. They want me to do it, right? Yeah. No, no, don't do it. <laughs> and the reason why is because they are not being direct with you. Yeah. You know, we are adults here. Hopefully we are adults here and you want people to tell you exactly what they want and be direct with you and have these conversations clearly. You don't want to be guessing what somebody wants from you or wants from the relationship all the time. It's it's not the best way to go about things. Now, of course, you're not going to see that in the beginning because everybody's kind of tippy toeing around, yeah. but eventually you want to get there. Right. But so what you're going to see is when your ex is starting to feel like they've lost you or they're losing you and you're not reacting or responding to their social media outcry or mm. whatever you want to call <laughs> <Outcry>. it <laughs> uh, whatever it is they're trying to do to get your attention and the space they'll feel the space growing okay they're gonna feel it mm -hmm. they're gonna feel that separation anxiety and that is gonna make their intrusive thoughts get worse and they're gonna start to have more panic in their thinking and fears are coming up overwhelming their unconscious mm -hmm. and so the internal struggle will get to the point where it's so much they got to find a reason to reach out to you, okay? 
and then they're just looking for an excuse. And that's why when they reach out, their excuse seems legitimate. It's, it's not very often I miss you, mm -hmm. although I did hear it in a call today. It's not usually I miss you. It's usually something so bizarre, like I miss the cat. And oh, it's yeah. absolutely crazy how many years we've been doing this and that people always use that mm -hmm. as the go-to reach out. Yeah. I mean, of all the, <laughs> you could literally say anything. And, and people always say, I miss the cat. To me, it's really symbolic. It's a pet. And for many people, pets are like children, especially nowadays. You know, with more modern couples, mm -hmm. you know, it's your dog is or your cat is your child. So it makes sense. It's just really odd that to see repeatedly over and over again in breakups, it's, it's the most common excuse to reach out. Mm -hmm. Now, sometimes they can be better at disguising these things like a lost key or a bill, but they don't really need it or a question they don't really need the answer to. Mm -hmm. Those are why we call them indirect directs. Okay. An indirect direct message. They're directly contacting you, but they're being indirect about why. And so you've got to be careful when this happens. You can't come across as too eager mm -hmm. because then it's just going to fall apart. Exactly. And thinking about avoidance being especially good at concealing some of their motives, they may also reach out to you to try to help you with something, mm -hmm. especially if their love language is more acts of service, mm -hmm. which sometimes you do see that more correlated with the avoidant attachment style. They will say, oh, you need an oil change. Now, let me help you with that. Or, oh, I remember that you had, you know, a, a broken shed. You know, let me go help fix it up. Mm -hmm. So it might be an offer to help you with something, even something in the past that you may ne have needed help with in the relationship. Mm -hmm. So keep that in mind when you see that. And uh, sometimes that could be a bid for them to connect with you. It's not directly in the sense of, hey, I want to bond with you and gaze into your eyes and, and you know, look into the sunset. No, it's not going to be that direct and clear, but it is saying, hey, I, I want to connect with you on some level and, you know, I'm still here for you. I, I want to know that you're still there for me is the big one. <laughs> yeah. That's really, yeah. I want to know that you're still there for me uh -huh. at this point. So, you know, these are the things that people do when they start to feel like they're losing you. Mm -hmm. As you can see, they slowly escalate their behavior to try and get your attention when their defense mechanisms aren't working to forget about you or ignore the situation and you are no longer chasing them their thoughts will overwhelm them and they start to do things like an indirect direct because mm -hmm. it's their separation anxiety building up and they're trying to feel safe with you again but many people make mistakes at this point they lose emotional self-control, they stay on the, on the phone with them for hours, mm -hmm. and they don't stick to the plan. This is what happens if you don't stay focused on personal growth and healing your attachment issues in no contact. When you get in front of them again, you're like a newborn baby crying for mommy, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> I mean, it's true. Yeah. You just can't control yourself. So that's why you have to make it absolutely your laser focused vision to understand what your issues are and how to fix them, how to heal them and get to a place where you're stronger and not like mommy, don't leave me, mm -hmm. which is essentially how it feels to an avoidant, right? Right, yeah. right. And what we're hoping that you gain from this video really is the importance of emotional self-control, but also understanding that exes, especially an ex who has more of an avoidant attachment style, has their own process and is very different probably from what you're going through and from what your perspective is. So we're hoping that this video, if anything, is reassuring to you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Because understanding that people operate differently and have different needs mm -hmm. is so critical because anybody you date is likely going to have different needs than you mm -hmm. and different desires and different amounts of closeness and space and ability to communicate and all those different things. And you have to understand, like, if you want to be with one particular person, you have to do your best to deal with that one particular person's needs and issues. Mm -hmm. You have to know your person, but you also have to know yourself to handle it and to be centered 
during those difficult times, which are inevitably going to come up with no, no matter who you date. Mm -hmm. Exactly. One thing that I would suggest is going back through this video and looking at the different behaviors that we'd mentioned. Of course, this is not going to be 100% accurate with every single avoidant on the planet, but review your own situation. We're always encouraging you to self-reflect, to think about yourself in this situation, your own mental health. And if you are avoidant yourself, you know, looking back at this video and saying, have you ever done any of these things? Yeah. So we'd love to hear from you too. Comment your thoughts and hopefully, you know, you were able to gather some more insight through this video. Absolutely. There's a huge shift within you and your own perspective once you understand attachment styles. Mm -hmm. It's a it's just a a glimpse into mental health and why people stay and why people leave and how to make people more likely to stay and how you can each meet each other's needs to make a relationship fulfilling. Mm -hmm. Okay, and of course, we know these things are confusing and that's why we have coaching available. You can get coaching from myself on my website. I do email coaching and I do Skype and you can get Skype coaching from Victoria. I'm here whenever you'd like to chat. All you have to do is click on her name on the top of the website if you want to schedule with her. And if you want to check out the Creative Healing Course or the workbooks, they're also available on the website. Those will help you a lot. But that's it for this video. I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. And I'm Coach Victoria. And we will talk with you soon.